live. We're going to be live on Facebook in one second. I'm telling my. Hi, everybody. It's very exciting to be here. I'm Julie Skolnick, and I'm here with a guest, Dr. Jenny Lloyd Strobus. And I have to say, are you out there as a parent, maybe as an educator, maybe as a clinician who works with, is, or loves gifted people with learning differences? Because if you are, I'm going to guess at some time in your life, if not right now, you're thinking to yourself, how do I find resources? How do I find people, professionals, places that can support my family, who can support me, who can support my teach my children, you're wondering where to find them. So I want you to know you have this great place. It's pretty new. We're heading toward our one year anniversary. It's called 2eresources.com. Why is it called that? Because 2e is the moniker for twice exceptional, which stands for gifted with a learning difference or a learning disability. So at 2eresources.com, we have a vetted listing of lots of different amazing folks who are there for you. And they're organized in categories, five categories, education, clinicians, consultants, associations, and enrichment. And every so often, and this is our first, we're going to highlight our resources so you can actually hear from them, though you can read about them and see all their cool stuff on 2 which by the way is free for you to go and look at 24-7 all over the world. So today we're going to jump in and we're going to learn about something called Nature Matters Academy. So welcome, welcome, Dr. Jenny. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I am like stoked because this is, I'm talking to so many clients and they're saying to me, I can't get my kid off the screen. My kid is on the screen. How do I get them interested in something other than the screen? And I'm thinking you might have an answer. So tell us, tell us what you do and why it's great for 2E people. Great. Sure. So um, we, we really focus on developing three skills um, in kids. And those three skills are critical thinking, self-regulation, and resilience. And what we found is that not only are those all of those skills incredibly essential to their futures, for their family, for their career, um, for just, you know, their future happiness, but it's um, also something that they really need to start developing as children. And um, I even think about my story, I think, I've thought about so many people's stories, critical thinking wasn't something I really didn't develop until graduate school. And it was simply because I wasn't given the experiences. And as an ADHD kid who was also super smart and gifted, you know, I had all these ideas and I was constantly running in all these different directions and doing these different things. And if I had someone who kind of was able to slow me down for a second and help me to develop these skills, um, I, I, I think that my, my future would have progressed a little bit differently. I've had a great life, but you know what I mean? It's just, we wanna give our kids, we wanna set them up so well as in their childhood to really set them up for success in the future. And we do that specifically through STEM or STEAM education, depending on which one you like. We do integrate art into our STEM education. And um, we, we do it through kind of these creative self-directed STEAM projects. And we're always getting kids outside. So um, we are scientists, we, we run the programs. And so we um, integrate a lot of a lot of experiments and prototypes and all kinds of cool stuff that kids get to build into these self-directed projects that they do. So, okay. So, wow. Critical thinking. We know that's really important. Not only is that important, but it's so much more fun, right? When you get to own your learning, when yes. you're going down the path and discovering and thinking in these very intentional ways. So I want to back up. Nature Matters Academy. What are you? Are you a school? Are you a camp? Are you in person? Are you online? Tell us so that we know how we can really Excellent. use it. So we're an, enri an enrichment program. So we're not a school, but we're an enrichment program and we serve both schools um, and families. So if you're a regular K through 12 school or an after school program, we provide curriculum and training for teachers to be able to, to um, provide our programs. And then we also provide programs for uh, parents. So we do in-person stuff here in New Mexico where we're located, 
but we've found that our audience tends to be more nationwide and even up into Canada a lot of times. And so we provide online camps for, for parents and online programs. And again, everything that we do is really focused around um, STEAM education and allowing kids to be creative and um, developing the skills that they need to develop, but through their own voice. So, okay, super cool because you can reach far and wide. So our international folks can even get in touch with you. But what I'm not getting is, wait a minute, Nature Matters Academy, you're outside, but you're online. Help me out here, my critical I thinking. Know. <laughs> I know, it's, um, it's a little bit not, um, it's a little bit illogical, right? When you're thinking, oh my gosh, I need to get my kids off screens. Why in the world would I put them on screens in order to get them outside in nature? But that's a beautiful part about this is that we can reach families um, across the world and we can help them and help their kids learn. And, and essentially what we do is we help them learn about a topic online. And, you know, we might be talking about like this week, literally in one of our camps, we were talking about the three types of bees, the three different types of bees and um, growth mindset. And so what we do is we talk about these things online and then we send the kids with their parents outside throughout the week to do various projects, to work on their growth mindset as they're learning about bees. And so we have about a meetup for about an hour online each week in um, our programs and our camps. And then the rest of that week, the kids are getting outside and doing things because we know um, and nature provides us with all kinds of health benefits and it's especially potent for two week kids. And um, so we know that we need to get them outside. So that's kind of how we structure it. So, okay. so. If a, if this sounds to me like it would be such a great resource for homeschoolers, but it also sounds like summer camp enrichment. Do you do it when it's cold in the Northeast and we don't have that beautiful weather that you guys have? <laughs> yes, absolutely. And granted, you know, I'm, I can kind of cheat. I'm in New Mexico where winter is like, it, it snows like every two or three weeks, right? <laughs> so it's a little different than my Canadian friends who, um, you know, it's like dangerous to go outside sometimes because it is so cold. And so we set them up with um, winter appropriate um, ideas for projects. And we, we like the kids to have um, that empowerment um, and kind of that buy-in by choosing their own projects. So we're like, oh, you know, it's winter where you guys are, are is really cold. Maybe we could study birds or maybe we could study snowflakes. And so we kind of give them some choices to where they can get outside and still learn about nature based on what nature looks like around for them. So no matter the season, we can get outside. So how many kids are in camp at a time? Oh, that's a good question. We do um, for a month long camp. So for four weeks of camp, we do four kids. And so our class sizes are very, very small because we literally, we teach the four kids at once, but we're communicating back and forth with individual kids throughout the week to help them with their project. Because we want to make sure that they are successful and they feel, um, I don't know, they feel validated and empowered and, you know, all those wonderful feelings that you feel when you actually complete something and it's good and you like it and you're proud of it. And so uh, we only do four kids at a time. Wow. So do you have multiple camps having a time so you have different age groups or how does that work logistically? Right now, um, our camps are still small enough that we keep everyone together and what, and that may change in the future, so um, I can't really speak to that yet, but what we have learned, I usually do age groups of about 6 to 11 or 12, and then 12 to 18, and those are the ones that I group them in, but I mean, it's still a really wide range, but I have found that um, kids do really well in that situation because the older kids, they can kind of become mentors to the younger kids, so I, I, I like the multi-age learning. That model works really well, plus um, our curriculum is written multi-ages, multi and so it helps kind of with that um, kind of classic family-based learning, like homeschool-style learning, right, where you have multiple ages sitting down and learning together, but learning at different levels, and that's kind of what we focus on. Cool. Okay, so I know from 2eresources.com that one of your core beliefs is that you believe in real experiences where kids are challenged to fail forward, fail forward. I love that. Tell us what that means. So failing forward is basically learning from our mistakes, right? Because um, we, we live in a very safe and guarded um, environment, both in our homes and in school. And, you know, kids are given assignments where they're pretty much guaranteed to quote unquote win. They're pretty much guaranteed to get it right. 
And I think about this with labs. So I taught science and biology at the college level for a really long time, 13 years. And even our labs were set up where they rarely didn't work. And that's not science. That's not, that's not reality at all. Usually science is like, you're doing the same experiment for like two, three, 400 times before you actually get a result that works. And you're like, oh crap, what did I do differently? Why is this working now? And you've got to figure it out. And so um, I, I love, because that's part of the resilience, right? Because not only can we learn resilience by being outside because we skin our knees and you know we fall down when we're climbing and all those things, but learning science is practicing resilience because it doesn't always work and you've got to try it again. And so the idea of failing forward is that it, it, with gifted kids, of course, we know that this is really important, right? Because they're already pretty darn smart and <laughs> they don't normally get things wrong. And so when they do have that moment of failure, it sets them really, really far back. And we want them to practice failure and know that not only is it okay, but it's good because it helps them to learn and to move forward. So we try to, I, we, we don't have to set anything up. We're outside, we're learning science, something's gonna fail. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just a matter of what and when. <laughs> built in, built in, yeah. Yeah. That's really awesome. So who is your, you know, ideal camper? Oh, great. So, um, I love working with teenagers. I, like I said, I taught at the college level for a long time and I love, um, kind of teaching older kids. And so when we get those, we're really excited, but to be honest, the people that we attract the most are late elementary school and middle school kids. And they're great too. We, we honestly, we love working with any age. Um, but we need them to at least be old enough to read and write. Um, and, and so that's kind of our criteria for getting in. And then of course, if we get to teenagers, we'll separate them off and we'll usually create a little leadership program on the side to help them, um, develop a different set of skills as well as the academics. Awesome. Okay. How do people get in touch with you, Dr. Jen? Right. So naturemattersacademy.com. If they go to that website, um, there is a tab for contact us. It has my email there and they can reach me there. And um, you can also, depending on if you're a teacher or if you're a parent, we have a tab for parents and we have a tab for teachers. And we basically list out the programs that we provide and how we can support both of those audiences. Awesome. One last question. So why are you listing on twoeresources.com? Oh, we are listing on TUI resources because we have found, so we did not set out to serve TUI kids. I'm just going to throw that out there. Um, I'm TUI, um, ADHD, it's my, my, my E. <laughs> and um, my kids, my, my oldest son is, is, is diagnosed gifted and ADHD and SPD. And really we started Nature Matters Academy because he, um, it's just how his brain worked. He needed outdoor hands-on experiences to learn. He, he doesn't do well sitting at a desk. He doesn't do well with pen and paper. He does well with hands-on creating and he's incredibly bright and it's so much fun to see him learn, but he does not fit in the mold of a traditional school. And so we have to do a lot of stuff outside of school in order to enrich his experiences. And when we started doing that with just me and my son, other parents started noticing and they're like, oh my gosh, and you know how it goes, right? All of a sudden you have all these kids over at your house. Next thing you know, you're moving to a trailhead and you're hosting classes. Uh -huh. And um, what I found over, I guess, four years of, of having this business, our four, business is about four years old, is that um, my ADHD kids, SPD kids, autistic kids, I mean, you can pick them out, right? <laughs> and um, it's so much fun to watch them from the first day of class to the last day of class, because you can see this huge progression. And it's like they find their groove. I have kids who've been kicked out of schools um, and are now having to be homeschooled because they just couldn't regulate in a school and teachers didn't know what to do with them. And then I've had them in my class and I'm not saying I'm a great teacher, um, but being outside and being in nature and doing things hands-on, I didn't have to discipline him. He regulated himself. And, um, and, and we've just seen that over and over and over again that all these two -week kids um, that they can regulate themselves outside and that as scientists, we can take their, their learning so much deeper. And it just, it's a beautiful mix. It's, it's fun to see it come together, I should say. That's awesome. Well, we love having you at TUIresources.com. It's so important for the world to know. So when you watch this, please share it with your friends because people need to know where there are good resources for them, for their families, for their students, for their clients. So Dr. Jenny, thank you for being with us. It's great to have you. Thank you for having me.